There was a couple points. Let's look at problem set, problem set number two. If we go to the book and look at number uh, 2.1G. This problem would ask you to um, come up with a cell diagram for the overall reaction, three triiodide molecules plus two irons going to two iron three plus species and nine iodide ions. And the question was, can we draw a cell that diagram? And if we draw a cell diagram, is that overall reaction is written, is that an electrolytic or galvanic, a spontaneous or non-spontaneous process? Uh, basically, it's simple enough. We see that the triiodide is being um, reduced, and so we can write a cathode half reaction that is involved in that. We can look that up in the back of the book and we see that there's a reaction for I3 plus two electrons going to three iodine molecules and that's 0 0.5338 volts. At the anode, the reaction would have to be two iron three pluses plus um, six electrons going to two irons. Actually, we could have just one, three, two, one. But uh, if you look in the back of the book, you see there's actually no listed value for that. Um, now, you can do what the mod did and look up in the library and find one. Or um, you can actually solve this because what we have is a, uh, we can combine half reactions to do that. And I want to just outline that briefly because that's something where we do have to be a little bit careful when we're combining half reactions. For example, if we combine a half reaction for the iron three plus plus E to go to iron two plus, we actually know that there is a, there's an E zero for that. There's also an E zero for iron two plus plus two electrons going to iron metal uh, and also an E zero for that in the book. And then the overall reaction is the one we want. Unlike uh, the previous situation where we could just simply add up the E zeros, in this case we cannot do that. And the reason for that is that unlike a normal cell reaction where there's no electrons left over, in this reaction you see that there is still electrons involved in the situation in the in the process. So what we have to do is go away from our shortcut method of simply adding the cell potentials and go back to adding the free energies of the reactions, which is really what's being added up. So in order to do this, we have to take, let's take this as being delta G of, remember delta G zero is equal to minus NFE zero. And so if we add, delta G zero for species one and delta G zero for species or for reaction two, now we get a delta G that's the proper delta G. And from that we can extract the proper E zero for the system. Now the Faraday's do not change so we can immediately remove those effects. But in order to add the delta G's, we can multiply the number of electrons times E0 for the first reaction, 0 0.770 times one is equal to is N E0. And the second one would be zero, minus 0 0.409 times two is equal to N E0. And we get a result that's minus 0.4 uh, I'm sorry, minus 0 0.048 times N, which is three, equals to N E zero. And so E zero in this case, for the reaction three, is minus 0 0.016. And so in this case, where we're adding the 
half cell reactions together to get a, uh, a new reaction, we do have to take into account the number of electrons involved in the system because we have to consider it as being a sum of free energies. We don't normally have to worry about that and when we're adding the free energies for this because we always make it so that the number of electrons are the same on, in all the, for the cathode reaction and the anode reaction. And so it, it, it cancels out all the time. But that's the only reason we don't have to do it that way. And so we would just put in our number here, minus 0 0.016. And then um, the E cell. Uh, there's a lot of different ways. One way I remember is I always have tr how, trouble sometimes remembering it. But if you subtract the reduction potentials uh, from the cathode to the anode, you'll get the proper result. Uh, 0 0.550 volts. And the cell, it'll be iron, iron 3 plus, aqueous. We have to have a, a salt bridge or a porous separator. And that would be our cell. And that would be a uh, spontaneous reaction, plus 0.55 volts. So it would be a galvanic cell. If you, if you look it up, you'll see a different number, perhaps. Uh, but it depends a little bit on what you get. Uh, but this would be the calculated one. Experimentally, you might actually be different. People might have measured it and found a different number. And notice again, the way we've done this is we've not inverted the EMF for that system. We're taking the reduction potentials as they're written in the back of the book or as we've uh, derived it here. So E0 is equal to, to uh, minus 0 0.016. So we're not adding EMFs. We're actually adding E0s for the system or subtracting the E0 from the end. Okay. Um, I think um, 2.4b, we can quickly go over that. That's an example of a problem that uh, is a Nernst equation problem that relies on substituting in the proper, uh, the different uh, concentrations. And so they give a cell reaction like so. Okay, so you have a iron 3 plus, iron 2 plus, copper 2 plus, and HCl in the system. What's the, they're asking what's the overall cell potential? They're not asking in the question what's the E0 for the reaction. They're actually asking what the cell potential is as it's written. So you can distinguish that from a standard cell potential, which would be the E0s of the system and the actual cell potential. Well, the anode, as always, is equal to, um, or the anode is always the one on the left, and typically uh, that's the convention. That E0 prime is a form of potential because it relies on the fact that it's in one molar HCl. And that's what we see. The cathode is copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons going to uh, copper, is the formal potential for that particular is um, 0 0.34 volts. So here's the standard cell potential, E0 cells, as always, the, um, the cathode minus the anode, and that would be equal to minus 0.43 volts. Um, but that's not what we're asking. The cell potential is 
the Nernst equation And um, we have to look at the overall reaction to get the proper form of the Nernst equation. In other words, according to the reaction that we've written, we're having two iron, two plus ions plus a copper two plus ion going to two iron, three plus ions and copper metal. And so in the Nernst equation, the way we've written it with a negative sign there, what's going to be on the top is the, the right-hand side of the equation. So that would be iron 3 plus squared over iron 2 plus squared and copper 2 plus. So this should not be anything new to you guys, but maybe you need a little bit of review. Again, we leave the copper out because it's not, it's a solid material uh, activity and the concentration is not included in these sorts of re calculations. And uh, you'll find that then the E cell is equal to zero point, minus point four volts. So that's a non-spontaneous reaction as you might anticipate knowing anything about copper and um, iron. Two point five is. Um, I'm just going to quickly outline the steps. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but um, basically, it's asking you taking the cell in two point four F, which is iron and cerium four mixed together. What will be the concentration of the species present in that cell when equilibrium is achieved? So the critical aspect of this. Uh, question is equilibrium is present. So first of all, look a little bit further down this question it says what's the potential of that cell? Well, the potential of a cell at equilibrium is going to be zero. So the cell potential is zero. That does not necessarily mean though that the half reaction potentials are zero. Cell potential is zero. What else do we know about equilibrium systems? Well, we know that the uh, at equilibrium, equilibrium systems can be characterized by an equilibrium constant. And by knowing the relationship between the equilibrium constant and the e standard cell potential, we can actually arrive at the equilibrium constant for our particular system. Now, depending on whether we write this as an electrolytic or a galvanic cell, we'll get a different uh, uh, a different um, equilibrium constant. It doesn't really matter. You can do it either way. But I, wrote, I, I left it as a gal, uh, an electrolytic cell, a non-spontaneous cell. And in that case, uh, the reaction equilibrium constant would be equal to the um, exponential uh, 38.92 reciprocal volts times the E0, which is minus 0.67 volts. And so 4.73 times 10 to the minus 12 is the equilibrium constant. And so just like any equilibrium system now, we can actually use this to figure out from an initial concentration what the final concentrations is at equilibrium. And we do this in freshman chemistry all the time. So let's uh, remember um, all we'd have to do is set up an equations like this where we put in the concentrations and we see that the um, uh, iron and cerium concentrations will change by some value x and they will decrease on one side of the arrow and increase on the other side of the arrow and uh, x can either be positive or negative at the end. You just solve for x and we find that x is approximately equal to 0 0.01. Uh, that means uh, according to our system that we've got approximately zero moles of iron 2 plus at the end. 
which is kind of, that's the sort of limiting reagent in our situation. So all of the iron 2 plus is basically gone, although it is not exactly gone. It's, it's some zero plus a very small value. And you can actually find out what that is by substituting in back into our equilibrium constant. And I'm not doing all the steps, but you should be able to follow along if you've done the problem. Or you should do it, and then you can follow along. And you see that would be true. And then we see that the concentration of iron is approximately 10 to the minus 13 uh, molar. It's actually 1.05 times 10 to the minus 13. So not zero, close to it. And if you put those into the half cell and use the Nernst equation, you can actually get the right half cell potentials. Um, so that's not too hard, I don't think. But it did require to think back to freshman chemistry to solve, to solve it, which is often the case. Okay, 2.5 can be done a couple different, or 2.8 is can be done a couple different ways. Uh, you guys did it the hard way that, that did it right. Uh, and so let me just show you the way I did it, which is a little bit simpler to conceptually, I think. Um, the question was, is that if I have a cell, and for example, it says copper, and then it has a metal, and then, um, um, or, yeah, I forget exactly how it is, but there's a uh, inert metal at the solution interface. And so the metal can be whatever, as long as it's inert. Does it make any difference what the metal uh, is. In other words, suppose that we want to use gold or platinum as the metal. Will it depend any, on anything uh, um, in the system? Again, assuming both gold and platinum are perfectly inert, there's no effect of the surface. The gold doesn't catalyze anything, platinum doesn't catalyze anything or anything like that. Suppose there is two, suppose there is two metals. Metal one and metal two. Uh, what we can do is consider then that the solution and metal one potentials, uh, let's not try that again. Can be subtracted from the potential from the solution and metal two. And those would be equal to the, um, the chemical potential of the electrons in those metals divided by the Faraday. So at the solution <coughs> metal interface. And so that would be if there was a difference, which there would be actually, uh, that's the difference that we would see. However, if we then look at the copper metal interface, so we've got, again, remember we've got copper metal solution. So we've looked at this interface. Let's look at this interface. Uh, we would find that that interface would be phi M1 minus phi copper that would be the difference at the one minus uh, phi M2 minus phi copper. And um, we would find that in that particular case that the chemical potentials in the metal one minus chemical potentials in the copper, uh, of metal two I should say, over the Faraday. So uh, what you see here is um, that those two potential differences are equal to each other and they would cancel each other out. So that any difference in potential that arises at the copper metal interface is canceled out by any difference in potential that arises at the metal solution interface. So that would that suggests that there is no difference depending on it. And you can solve it a different way, like the book kind of outlines a different way. And it gives you the same basic result. All right. All right. Well, let's stop here. Let's uh, take a break. And uh, I've also, what I've done for you guys in the 
uh, that uh, want to take a look at it. I've photo or, uh, scanned in the notes, solution set for, my, uh, for the problems, and I put it on. I'm going to put them on the web page. They're not on there right at this particular moment, but this after this evening they will be on there, so you can go to the web page and download the uh, solution sets for the problems that are mine. They, you know, don't take my solutions as gold. I can make mistakes, so but you can use <laughs> to check your results and see what you got. Especially the people that are not doing the problems and handing them in. You can check them yourself. All right, let's take a little break.